Problem F11 says, determine the resultant internal normal force, shear force, and bending moment at point C in the beam. So we are looking for the normal force N, shear force V, and bending moment M. And taking a look at the beam, it's supported by a roller at A to the left of C, and a pin at B to the right of C. And there is a 60 kNm moment acting on the left end of the beam and a downward 10 kN force on the right. And now the first step for solving this problem is of course drawing our free body diagram of the entire system, just like we do in statics. So here is the beam, the 10 kN force, and the moment on the left, and then point C. And at A, we're going to have our vertical reaction force and also at B. So I'll just name them AY and BY considering an XY coordinate system. And then, of course, we need our dimensions. And technically, you can add the horizontal force at point B due to the pin. But in this case, since there is no external force acting in the X direction, we can just leave it out. So now this completes our free body diagram of the system. So now we can move on to the global equilibrium of the entire system, which is essentially our statics analysis in order to find the values of AY and BY. So now taking a look at the free body diagram that we've drawn, how can we find the values of AY and BY? Since AY and BY are two unknowns, we can't just go straight into using the sum of forces in the y direction since we'll have two unknowns and one equation. So in this case we can just simply use moments. And here we want to take a moment about a point with an unknown force, so either at point A or B. That way we can solve for either one. And I'm just going to call the left end D and the right end E. So now for example I can start by summing up the moments about point A. So we'll set the sum of moments at A equal to zero and assuming counterclockwise as positive. So starting off to the left of A, of course we have the 60 kilonewton meter moment and that is already counterclockwise so it's positive. And then to the right we have the force BY. So in this case for my drawing this is also positive following the right hand rule. So we have plus BY times the distance between A and B, which is 2 meters. And finally, of course, on the far right, we have the 10 kN force, which creates a negative moment, since the moment is clockwise. So that is going to be minus 10 times the distance, which is 4 meters. So there we have our completed moment equation. And as you can see, we can now easily solve for BY. So isolating BY, we have BY equals 40, which is the negative 10 times 4 added to the other side, minus the 60, and then divided by 2, which is equal to negative 10 kilonewtons. So that is the value of BY. And now notice carefully that in my free body diagram I had drawn the force arrow of BY as upwards when it should actually be downwards since we got a negative value for BY. But since this was just an incorrect guess we can go ahead and leave it like that to avoid any confusion. And it's good to remember that even if you draw it incorrectly on your free body diagram the math will sort itself out. And now that we know the value of BY, we can go ahead and simply use the sum of forces in the Y direction equal to zero to find AY. So assuming up as positive, this leaves us with AY minus the 10 kilonewtons. Again, even if your drawing is upwards, you should still leave the negative sign you get from your calculation. And then minus the 10 kilonewtons that acts at point E. So solving for AY, we get AY equals 20 kilonewtons. 
And so now we have found all the unknown forces that are acting on the beam, which means that we are now able to finally start solving for the internal forces. So first, of course, we have normal force. And again, for this problem, we are interested in point C. And now, of course, the first step when solving for internal forces is to make the appropriate cuts along the beam, typically between uh, any changes in forces in order to analyze the internal effects on the beam. So for example here I can make a cut between points A and B at point C just like so. And now for this case we can analyze the left side of the beam. So here I'll be drawing the portion of the beam that's to the left of the cut along with the respective applied forces and moments, and also the dimensions. And now, of course, on the right, we add in the internal loadings. So this is the normal force N, which acts in the X direction. And then we have shear force V, which acts in the Y direction, and also the bending moment M around the Z axis. So now that we have our internal loadings, we can go ahead and solve for n by setting the sum of forces in the x direction equal to 0. So the only force we have here is nc, which acts to the right, which is positive. Of course, considering the xy coordinate. And like I mentioned previously, in this problem, we don't have any applied forces that are acting in the x direction. So simply, the normal force at point c will equal to 0. So here we see that there is essentially no normal force created by the external forces. So now moving on to shear force. For this I will just be using the same diagram I drew above. Here we are now looking for VC which acts in the vertical direction. So we will be setting the sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero to solve for VC. So we have of course the 20 kN force and then simply minus the VC. Hence, the shear force VC will be equal to 20 kN. So now finally, we need to find the bending moment. So of course, for this, we'll be summing up our moments. But first, we need to pick a point in which we want to take our moments about. So here on the drawing, this is point C. And since we're trying to find MC, we can go ahead and take the moments about that point. So we can write the sum of moments about point C with counterclockwise as positive. And this is around the Z axis. So setting this equal to zero, we have the 60 kN meter moment on the left, which is again positive since we are considering counterclockwise as positive. So now taking the moment from C to A, this is going to be negative since it's clockwise. So that will simply be negative 20 kN times the 1 meter. And then finally plus MC since MC is going in the counterclockwise direction. So that completes our moment equation. And we can now solve for MC which ends up being negative 40 kN meters. So that is our resultant bending moment. And so now we have found all the internal forces for this question.